Okay, guys. Um, so I'm going to keep today simple. We have our placing a, a Facebook pixel video for your Shopify store. Now I just want to show you how to create a product catalog for your Facebook pixel. And the importance of this is it allows you to dynamically retarget people that were just on your website. So what that means is, say Joe Y goes to your website, looks at a few of your products, adds one to the cart and doesn't buy it. What this allows you to do is it allows you to send him an ad. It allows you to send Joe an ad with the products that he just added to his card and didn't buy, trying to win him back. So these normally, I would say for 99% of our clients, these are their most profitable ads. These are ads that don't scale, right? Because there's only a limited number of people that have been to your website that added an item to their card and left without buying. Uh, so they don't scale. But since you're targeting that really high intent of these people that just about made a purchase but left for some reason or another, they're extremely profitable. So what I'm going to show you real quick here is how to create your product catalog on Shopify by using an app and then connecting it to your Facebook pixel. So let me make myself small. There we are. Okay. So we're going to start off here. Uh, you're going to go to business.facebook.com. You're going to click your little hamburger, or you may have nine blocks in the top left. So you're going to click that. You're going to go underneath Assets and click on Catalogs. I'm already on the page, but it looks like it's going to reload. Uh, so you're going to have to bear with my stupidity. All right, so here we go. On the top right, you're going to click Create a Catalog. So you're an e-commerce store. You're going to click on e-commerce. You're going to go to Next. You can name it. Uh, click your business. We'll click our business. We're going to name this one test. You can go ahead and delete it after. I'm just going to call it test at delete. You name it after your brands, whatever you want. I recommend doing it after your brands uh, in case you start other e-commerce stores. So test, delete. It's going to create it. We're going to go view the catalog. Um, so now what we can do is we can do one of two things. Uh, we can create the catalog and the feed within Shopify or connect the pixel. I'm just going to go ahead and go into Shopify here, uh, go into the apps on Shopify, and we are going to download an app. So you're going to click visit that Shopify app store. And the app that we use most of the time is called Flexify. So I'm not going to click the button. You know how to do that. You'll click the button and just search for Flexify. It's free. So you don't have to worry about paying for any any app. It's free up until like a thousand or two thousand products. Uh, so you should be good. Uh, so go ahead and download Flexify, and then once you do, go back into Apps and click on it, and it's going to bring you up to this page here. Once it loads, so what it will do is it'll spit out an RSS feed. If you really want to see what it looks like, I can load it up here so you can get an idea of what this app is doing. Uh, with your your uh, product data, um, but what it does is it just makes an RSS feed. And that may take a little bit to load. If you do want to, you can use a super feed. So what the super feed does is if you have more products, say you have just a ton of products, what the super feed will do is instead of having uh, each SKU broken down by size, it'll only have one master SKU. So say you have a product that has small, medium, large, XL, 2X. So that being five products, it'll just say, hey, that product's only one item, which is smart of them to do. They didn't do this before. It's new for them. Um, so you can make a super feed. It, you just click the button. It's going to give you out the same RSS feed that you'll use. Um, so no worries there, um, which actually we're going to want to switch to that because you may get an error when you check this. RSS feed. So we're just going to switch to it now for you guys, just so you can see. So if you copy and paste that URL and it shows a page like this, I'm glad this happened so you can see it. Um, don't use that link because it's basically saying, hey, that, that, that feed doesn't work because there's probably too much data um, in it. Um, so we're going to switch to the super feed and the feed is being generated. We will see how fast it can load. Yeah, that one's still timed out. Let's just see how fast it loads. If it takes too long, um, I'll chop the clip up and use, you know, editing magic to not make you wait so long. Okay, guys, so we're back. You know, so here it is. So here is the feed. You're going to click it. I made the super feed. We have 961 items. See what it looks like. 
this is what it looks like. This is what the feed is pulling from. This is what Facebook is going to use to understand your products. This is what it's going to use uh, if you want to, in the dynamic ads, use a title or a description or any of that. This is what it's going to use. It's also going to use this photo from the product. So once you have that made, you're going to go back into the catalog. So you, you want to leave that tab open, right? And then you're going to go, go to product data sources. There's no source in here yet, or there shouldn't be. If it's new, if it's not new, you're going to do the same thing anyway. You're going to click on add products on the right. And then for here, you're going to use use data feeds. So you click on use data feeds, test delete. You can leave that. You can change it to brand name dash catalog, whatever you want. And then you're going to want to click on set automatic file upload schedule. You're going to want to paste the URL in there. And you can just do it hourly. Hourly is fine. Um, you don't really have to change any of this here. We're going to start upload. So this will manage that feed. And then right here, it's just going to be uploading the feed. So what this is going to allow you to do would be so we can go to this store. This is our shop that we use for one of our brands. We have I don't know, about a million followers on Instagram. You go here. Say somebody comes here and looks at these white slip-on shoes. What the feed allows us to do is it allows us to retarget them. You can see I just switched it over. Um, so I'm going to have to actually do this on the actual product catalog. Because right now what should be triggering, and I highly recommend you use one, Google Chrome, and two, you download the Facebook Pixel Helper. What should be triggering when your product feed is set up correctly is the view content trigger. That way you can dynamically retarget people. Right now, it's not set up correctly. So I'm gonna to have to switch this um, because it looks like we overrode um, its basic feed. So we had to switch it to the super feed. Um, but you can see here, it accepted most of the products. 95 were rejected due to errors. Sometimes you'll have that if you don't have anything in the description, which I'm guessing the majority of those don't have anything in the description. So we'll just have to go in and fix it. But right now, 866 of the products were added to this feed. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on event data sources. So we just added the product data sources. Now we're going to want to connect the pixel. That way they know to talk to each other. So we're just going to click on connected tracking and we're going to add in the test pixel that we made. So right now, obviously we're not using it, but that's where you would just type in the name of the pixel that you're using and just make sure it's the right pixel ID because sometimes, and I've done it before, I've created multiple pixels for a brand and it wasn't actually the one that was used on the website. I used the wrong one for a little bit and then that's no fun for anybody because then you can't retarget people that were just on your website. But that's it, that's how you do it. To make sure it's working, let's just go to a website. Uh, we can go to a website like Iconic here just so I can show you like how uh, this should work and how you can really troubleshoot it. Uh, my site right now, one of our sites is not really the best thing for you to look at because I have to fix the feed actually. So let's just go to their top sellers. Let's just go here. So what you should see here, and they have it on correctly, is the view content is triggering. So on your Shopify store, um, it, this is how it'll manually set it up is this is the view content, uh, which will trigger when what that means is Basically, somebody just looked at a product on your website. So say I'm looking here, I guarantee the next time, or one of the next time I'm, I'm on Facebook or Instagram, I'm gonna be retargeted with an ad for this exact canvas because they have their product feed connected to their pixel and that's how it'll work. Other ways, just, just for knowledge for you to troubleshoot your pixel, if I click on add to cart, Facebook will know that too. So they have their feed set up. They're gonna know, hey, they added that product to their cart. Um, let's retarget them with the ads. So that's how you set it up. That's how it's used. I hope this was helpful for you. If you liked it, you know, please leave a comment. If you didn't, you can leave a comment too. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks again for joining me. I'm Jacob Chandler, and this is Data Over Ego, and I will see you next time.